what is going on Thanks guys, so Brown here and welcome back to, to another episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode here Let's today for part 5 for the Dutch Grand Prix in the background you will see my interview with Will Buxton we had another one at the end of the last episode another interview just discussing about the first four rounds and just saying about what my second driver could do what we could do better as a team so you'll see that going on in the background but if you have been enjoying this series so far make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more like this but once we get through this slightly boring bit we will get into the action at the Dutch Grand Prix well, it's been wonderful to spend some time with you best of luck out on track so this is where the interesting part is we're going to be doing an upgrade on the faculty for the durability because i thought after china when Gran Yu Jui had that failure it was worth upgrading that part and to also beef Gran Yu Jui as well we are also going to be doing an update on the driver simulator that's the word i was looking for you see here we have two upgrades coming in as well but let's go to qualifying for the Dutch Grand Prix for the very very first time and as you can see there from those intermediate green tri tires it is raining here in Holland which I believe it does rain most of the time I think is basically England Holland I think it can be nice but most of the time it is just raining but this track is something else that this bank corner is different gravy as we nearly lose it through the final bank corner we go p7 so far to be honest i i felt quite good the car has felt good in wet conditions last time out when it was raining in china the car felt really good i don't know what it is with wet conditions but the car she kind of comes alive i don't know whether it's because everything's equal in the rain but the car just feels really nice to drive we come up to the end of our next lap and we've actually found a couple of attempts there and it's going to put us up into p4 but those out then at the end of q1 we actually got through for one so did no guanyu joe missed out sorry they ignore me but antonio Giovinazzi. Kimi Raikkonen as well, but by the time we get to Q2, it is raining. Unfortunately, I was having issues with my recording software, so Q2 is a bit jumbled up here. But it was heavy, wet weather tyres, and we did struggle to make it through, and we did fail getting into Q3. So let's go to the race. Fifth and final Grand Prix win here at Zandvoort. He came from 10th on the grid to beat his McLaren teammate Alain Prost by just two tenths of a second. Well, Zandvoort is a very different circuit today, of course, but still one with an incredible legacy. And we're going to add to that. Welcome along to the 2020 Dutch Grand Prix. Four lefts and 10 rights make up the 14 corners of the narrow and demanding Zandvoort circuit, with plenty of peaks and valleys over the course of a 2.6 mile lap, which will demand absolute concentration from our drivers here today. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Ricardo, Daniel Kvyat, and Hamilton, Leclerc, Verstappen, Albon, and Lando Norris. Stroll, Brown, Carlos Sainz, and Ocon, Magnussen, Russell, and Guan Yu Zhou and Pierre Gasly, Grosjean, Latifi, Giovinazzi and Kimi Raikkonen finishes off the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? So we're going to be starting P12 after qualifying. You can see no rain expected, just going to be cloudy here in Zandvoort. 
But what we're going to, be going to be doing, we're just going to be doing the strategy at the top there from the softs onto the hard tyres. We're going to put a bit more fuel in the car because I always do. I know a lot of people take fuel out, but I just like to have that bit of um, that bit of extra fuel to play with. If I need to push, I can, and I know it's there. But as the five legs go out here in Holland, we are underway here at Zandvoort. Everyone getting it. A pretty good start. We're going to go to the outside, and we've actually got a stunning start. We're going to go round the outside of both Red Bulls there, and maybe the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. We can't. We've got one of the Red Bulls, but we haven't. We're going to have a little look down the inside of the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. The, I believe it's Verstappen has got away. I think it is. It might actually be Albon. I think it is Albon actually. But side by side with Charles Leclerc, Charles Leclerc pushed us out. So he has Max Verstappen there, there, and we're actually now battling side by side with the McLaren of Lando Norris. So you can see there's actually on the hard tyres. So not sure what he's doing. He might be going longer. He must be going longer. In fact, the hard tyres. I'm just being stupid there. But what a start that was! It actually felt good. Battling away with one of the red, with both Red Bulls and a Ferrari, but we just got to kind of look after ourselves now. As next lap, it is Verstappen. We're getting pretty close. We're actually in the points. We're P10, so as long as everything stays the same, I would gladly just red flag the race now. We don't need to do the next 34 laps. Just, just give us a point. We haven't got any yet in the series and it would just be nice to get a point it's going to be hard for us but let's just see what we can do but now out of the race Lewis Hamilton's engine's gone bl gone bl gone bust basically and it has blown up and Lewis Hamilton I believe he was second but he is out of the race we've gone past him and it's literally lasted three laps as that engine and it's gone bang the Mercedes known as the most efficient engine well it's anything but that here at Zamvort you can see it just goes there nothing the brick can do about that and he is out and going to be watching the next laps of this race on the sidelines I think he better go and get a cup of tea because it's going to be a long race watching it from the Mercedes garage this is what it looked like from Albon leading the battle between him himself Leclerc and Verstappen his teammates and he actually gets caught out and he actually slows down for some reason there when he's going past the Mercedes but now here comes Charles Leclerc trying to get past Alex Albon down the inside Albon's not giving up on this one bit as they go through the kink I believe this is turn three but Alexander Albon does defend and keeps that position ahead of us there this was kind of though they were battling we just didn't have the pace to keep up with them the Red Bull and the Ferrari just in a different league compared to us so we just come to watch it but here comes Lando Norris Lando Norris pretty much got the move done there but I'm gonna get the elbows out we're gonna squeeze them out into the chicane the chicane is so cool at this track this whole track is so good I, it's definitely up there as one of my favorite tracks my, my all-time favorite track is canada but as you can see here they're, they're getting held up by the the renault he's um i believe these may have actually pitted now so the renault get having a very good start charles leclerc going to go for it again on Alexander Albon now to the outside I think it was, he tried the inside before round the outside is going to go to Charles Leclerc Albon's not giving up this time though it looks like he's gonna have to and Charles Leclerc gets the move done on the tie driver and now can get on with the rest of his race but not a lot was really happening to be honest in this race apart from the Red Bull Leclerc battle we make a big mistake there on the exit before the bank corner and this might be the time Lando Norris gets past us we're gonna tuck back in his slipstream trying to go back round the outside of him but we're too far back and Lando Norris has unfortunately knocked us down into P10 
I was going to say it knocked out the points there, but we were actually in P9 because of Hamilton's retirement. But here comes, you would have seen that S van Ocon have a look at, look at us there, and he nearly got past us, but now Ocon is battling away with the racing point of Sergio Perez, I believe it is. And he may actually have lost the position. He has, I think. He's still there at the inside. I think he's actually a hefty bit behind. Now it looks like the racing point might have it done. But Ocon's not giving up. But he's going to have to now. As the racing point has got the job done on the Renault Vestavan Ocon. Here though comes Kevin Magnussen. Kevin Magnussen is literally, he's got two of them, he's already just blitzed Ocon. Now round the outside of Sergio Perez, actually I think, I do believe it is Lance Stroll, I get mixed up all the time. But, Kevin Magnussen down the inside gets the job done on the racing points. And now, it's behind us. And now skipping on all the way into lap 12. You're going to see in this video a lot of battles around me because not really a lot happened in my race. I was just managing the gap, managing the tyres. So we're going to go into the hard tyres here. So out of the pits we come now and we'll just have to see what we can do. We've pitted a lap before those behind us so we'll see if we can beat them out and retain our position which is now... 11 until the McLaren pit. Both McLarens, in fact, were on the hard tyres. So, the strategy they've been doing, I don't, I'm not sure what. I'm guessing they're going to go to the softs at the end. But Kevin Magnussen goes into the hards. So does Ocon. You can see us just over the other side of the barrier. And we have beat them all out. And we will retain that position ahead of Kevin Magnussen there. But skipping on, you can see this was actually one lap later. We're actually pulling the gap out to Kevin Magnussen. The pace in this hard are actually feeling really good. But now skipping on, this is um, Carlos Sainz coming in to make his one and only stop. He's actually going on to the softs. So my guess is Lando Norris will do the same thing. And he's going to come out. He was already ahead of us, Carlos Sainz. But he hasn't come that far out in front of us, just just under 3 seconds, 2.8 seconds in front of us. So, we may be able to beat Lando Norris out, we'll just have to wait and see. He was battling Lando Norris, so let's just see. One lap later though, into the pits comes Lando Norris. He was in a bit of a battle with Albon and Sergio Perez. But he's going to come into the pits, same as Sainz puts on the softs. So, McLaren going very aggressive towards the end of this Grand Prix. Now, where is Lando Norris going to come out? Watch the other side of that barrier. And it's actually come out ahead, I believe, of his teammate, I, I think. Yes, he is. Look, there's Carlos Sainz. He's come out way ahead of them. And we are going to skip on all the way on to the final lap. Sebastian Vettel has won it. We were just managing the gap to Magnussen. The McLarens came out too far up the road. So we will come home for P11. A difficult race then on a circuit that demands complete concentration. But they've persevered to take the win here today. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Ferrari are at it again, an excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there.
We're going to be honest, I felt a little bit bad after that race. I felt like I didn't really show you much, but not really a lot happened in that race to really talk about. Apart from the busy odd battle, but nothing that really affected the race. So the McLarens just did a great strategy. We just stuck to our guns, and, it, and in the end, the overcut, the overcut was massively the strategy to go here today. Start on the house, going onto the soft. It really did work. Lewis Hamilton, the only retirement, the one the safety car or anything to mix up, unfortunately, because that was a race that really could do with a safety car. But that race, we actually had really good pace in the race. Um, but we just didn't have it. We were keeping the gap at about 1.8 seconds to Kevin Magnussen which it actually felt good, I thought we'd just fall back, but we really did have the pace. We are only two points behind us, like just in front of us in the R&D, but into the rivalry now, and we've pulled out more on George Russell then, and George Russell now 17 to 6, and we'll be looking to extend that one out in the Spanish Grand Prix next time out our acclaim has gone up to to level six which is good I'm still getting my head around the acclaim thing we're going to get both gold bonuses then from our two sponsors we had a bit of damage I'm not sure when we had damage but we had damage and now our budget is just under 4 million at 3.7 so there isn't long to the next Grand Prix in Spain so we're going to have to do one thing we are going to do one upgrade on the chassis side and that's going to be this roll dampers upgrade I believe we are going to do but there we go we have done that upgrade but if you have enjoyed this video Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in Barcelona. Goodbye.